Erwood Hall, for such is its name, is a modernised building of dressed stone, with rooms of considerable size and number. In the centre there is a noble tower, underneath which is the main entrance to the elegant structure, reached from the ground by a fine flight of steps. On the right side of the hall are fitted up the various offices required by the servants, and also the stables, coach house, and other outbuildings necessary. On the left side is the lawn and the terraces. In the centre of the neatly laid out frontage is a very fine layer, with a fountain springing up from an artificially constructed basin. A number of carefully laid out flower beds, with their gaily blooming flowers contesting with the sombre hue of the green mossy rocks on the right side and the variegated trees on the other, with the noble archway in front, make it a very pleasing sight. On the entrance arch to the terraces, are the crest and monogram of the family inhabiting the hall, namely Samuel Grimshaw, Esquire, J.P., a venerable gentleman who, prior to his death, made this abode his country seat. The terraces rise in easy ascents to the beautiful romantic walks on the high hill, situated upon a declivity of which the entire buildings rest, securely sheltered from the fierce winds which sweep over the heights around. Internally, this mansion is most magnificently furnished, not only with most of the modern luxuries which wealth can command, but also with many rare and costly works of art, the production of foreign continental lands, more especially Italy, whose holy city, magnificent Rome, has been brought, under good contribution, to provide some of the marvellous paintings or splendid marble which adorn the walls of this palatial home. Passing into the various staircases, we find the walls adorned with extremely well-executed and fresh-looking medallions, and scenes in history depicted in exquisitely worked white elgin and other marbles. The upstairs library, which is superbly furnished, contains some very fine volumes, perhaps some of the oldest books extant. The reception room, leading from the floor of the building, is furnished in the most luxurious manner. Within a splendid frame are some remarkably fine photographs, one of the Queen of Spain and her daughters, presented to the Grimshaw family. The downstairs library is well worthy of notice, containing as it does some thousands of volumes of the rarest and most costly productions of the press. The roof is beautifully coloured and adorned with a splendid floral pattern in bright tints, with flowered corners and a neat border to match. There is also emblazoned on the ceiling in panel fashion the arms and crest of the family, which is a splendid piece of decorative art. The situation of the hall is one of the most romantic which could be selected, founded upon a space made in the declivity of a rising hill, amidst the most exquisite woodland scenery and quietly secluded. It is admirably fitted for a place of retirement from the busy scenes and anxieties of city life. The views from the front of the building, and especially from the tower, are extremely grand. The bold, bleak-looking peaks of the Derbyshire hills, rising in lofty, undulating heights far away in the distance, strike the eye with their variegated herbage or moss-covered rocks. The fine, bracing air of this district is beneficially felt by the inhabitants of the valleys or mountainsides. The hall nestling in its snug and almost inaccessible position, is approached from Whaley Bridge and Buxton by an excellent carriage road, which connects itself from the highway in Fernalee. The route is very pretty, and varied scenes meet the eye.